Ben English, Forum Name Hyperbytes. Um, there's been quite a bit of chat recently on the forum regarding issues with uh, database connections and maybe a little bit of confusion to uh, new users as to how they work and I think particularly the difference between the um, workflows connection that you'll find within the globals and work workflows and the database manager connection. So I thought I'd produce this video just to try and clarify things for people and give them a better idea of uh, what's happening. So when you first create your project, um, you have the option to specify a database type and the database engine, fairly straightforward. And then when you do that, then you will then create a database connection in the globals and it will probably have a database connection there, of course, and the database manager. Um, out of the box, um, the workflows should work fine. Sometimes a database manager won't and you'll see why in a moment. Um, so what I want to do is just talk you through how these connections work, why there is uh, differences between them, and then I'll give you some practical examples of setup of those connections. So we're going to start here with, uh, we've got Wappler down in the bottom left hand corner there. We've got a computer, which is our web server, and we've got a database server. May well be that the database server and the web server reside in the same place. They may be the same server. They may be totally different. That doesn't really matter. Um, Wappler caters, caters for all of these different uh, setups. So when you actually enter all your database details in and uh, you do a database check, how does that actually happen? Well, what actually happens is that the um, test is via a script that's uploaded to your server. Now, it's a slightly different if you're in a Docker environment because everything is effectively done locally and then a, a mirror copy of that is uploaded to your server. Um, but the general principles are exactly the same, so if you just bear with me, I will be making reference to an F FTP connection here, but it doesn't specifically have to be. It could be just simply a database save. Sorry, uh, um, Wappler page save. So we have our Wappler copy, and that sends a connection script up by FTP to your web server. That then runs on your web server. So uh, it's important that that script is uploaded to the correct place, which is why it's essential that your FTP settings point to your web route, um, which for PHP is probably going to be something like HDDocs or public HTML or www. For Node, it's going to be the folder that you've probably created to put your Node application in. For me, as a cPanel user, I would gen I generally use um, Node.js app as the um, directory name. So when that script is uploaded by FTP to the server, that runs on the server and it talks to our database server. The database will then process the request that's sent from the web server and return it back, or an error, obviously, if there's something wrong, to your web server. Your web server will then pass that reply and it will turn it into a JSON response for use within your server action or subsequent um, app connect actions. So that's how the globals workflows connection works. But a database connection works in a different manner because the database connection really needs to get into that database properly um, to be able to create tables and uh, be able to manipulate the data, etc. in them directly. It actually creates a direct connection from Wappler to that database. including spelling mistakes, but I will not worry about that, shall we? Um, that causes a few issues because if your um, server has additional security on it to stop direct connections occurring uh, for security reasons, and many, I would say, probably most do, then obviously there may be some additional settings required or there might be a little bit of configuration required on your server to allow that to happen. So 
what we're going to do is we're going to pop into Wapner now. I'll show you how to create the uh, a local and a remote um, connection, a target, and then we'll look at how those um, database connections work in each of those individual cases. So here I am. I'm uh, in a project I've created for this specifically for this. And at the moment, all I've done is create the very basics of the project. Um, the initial general setup and we have a target. That target is only um, FTP to a local folder. This is a local target and we have no database set up. So what I'm going to do in this example, I'm going to use um, MySQL as my local development database. And then I'm going to use, um, sorry, I'm going to use SQLite as my local database. And then I'll use MySQL as my remote. Um, See again, it mentioned a few times on the forum about using SQLite in the production environment. My advice would be don't. It's neither um, scalable enough, uh, fast enough, robust enough to be able to be used in a production environment, but it is ideal for a development environment where performance is not quite the issue and probably the data loads are going to be much, much lower. So what I'm going to do is for I'm going to set up my database. I'm going to call it SQLite. I actually have a folder set a file set up and there we are and then save that. So that is the basic level of our database server set up. And if we now go into workflows, what we'll see is it's created a connection called DB. Um, that's a standard connection that Wapler creates. Um, you can rename it if you want. I really see no advantage in doing so. Bearing in mind this is a connection name, not a database name. It's a connection name. Um, so unless you have a burning desire to, I would suggest that you just leave that at its default. And if we go into our database manager, again, because we're dealing with a local database, there's no ex extra security on it, etc., and we have our connection to our table. I'm just going to create a new table in there. I'm going to call that users. And I'm going to just add a couple of fields. So we'll have um, email. Being thoroughly lazy here, I'll just leave everything at the default of 255 characters. Password. And let's see, we'll have rule. Commit those changes. There we are. We're done now. That is our local target setup. But that's the easy bit. Next, we need to look at the um, production target. Okay, so now I've uh, created our production target. Um, obviously, still haven't set up any database settings on that because I want to go that through it that go through that with you but we can see that I can successfully connect that server uh, without any problems using node environments so remote directory is node.js app um, in my particular case so how am I going to set up a database well before we make a start we need to make sure that that database is set up within our hosting service um, this particular uh, app I've got running on a um, VPS running cPanel and if I just drag my cPanel screen over and go down to the databases section you will see that I've created a database called Brian Demo and I've created a user to be able to access that and that user has been given all of the appropriate authorities to uh, run that database so I'm going to have to use those settings within this database so this is a MySQL database so we're going to go to one server type is going to be custom MySQL my host for this is going to be simply the IP address of the server. It's 
just get those settings back from my other monitor my database is called Brian demo user is Brian demo and my password is a password it's actually what the rocks <laughs> obviously I'll be deleting this database as soon as I'm finished um, so I'm going to save that whoops port sorry standard port for database 3306 unless you're using docker which if I remember rightly is 9906 so they have set our database connection up um, we can view that there without any problems um, I'm currently in my development target so if I close that switch to production and reopen and that close bit is important a view of the connections we can then see that we have all of those um, connection settings set up so that means that we're okay for running our global connections for within DB but if we go into database connections um, I'll just do a refresh on this uh, tables and try a apply database so apply our changes we can do that and that's because these particular servers that I'm using don't require any additional security um, so there won't be any problems with connections but with some databases you're going to have to jump through a few hoops just to create a few extra settings to allow that database to be connected okay so now let's have a look at a server that's a little more complicated just to give you an idea of uh, what you may have to do in this case I'm going to give you an example from the uh, shared host provider that I use in the UK here and they have quite an extensive um, security set up on this I'm showing you Hyperbytes Core UK my old company name uh, no longer trading now uh, no longer using the website so quite happy to use that for demo purposes and if I look in my MySQL databases I've got in actual fact three databases here we'll use this one so there's our connection setting there I'm not actually going to reset this up uh, what I want to show you is the difference between the, the settings we have a username there and we have our server there um, and our standard connection of 3306 but if I go into remote SQL databases we'll see now that the um, setup is quite different we have a completely different domain name for the access to the database by direct connection you have a port number that is custom to that particular uh, server so you have to know that unique port number to be able to access that database and also just to make things a little bit more difficult you also need to have the IP address of that of your current setup your current Wepler uh, setup added to the remote IP list so that gives you a great length of security you've got your remote IP address has to be there it's great if you have a fixed IP address a little bit messy if you have a, a dynamic because you need to keep adding it to that list but you say you have completely different settings and a completely different port which means that when you come to set up your connection settings here then I would actually be using the connection settings that we have here which uh, so that would be mysql gb stack cp dot com uh, and a port number 49548 um, in place of the the standard settings and without changing those settings that direct connection wouldn't work because the database server would just simply close the connection to the um, database because it didn't pass the appropriate security requirements 
just to recap on where we are before I uh, finish this session um, I'm in development here if we want to just double check our settings we can just simply click on in this case the workflows connection options and we'll see as it should be the development um, target shows us the SQLite connection and if we go to database manager then if we click on database connection again we'll see the um, SQLite settings. If I now go into um, production back in the workflows I would always recommend you do a refresh um, and then hit your connection options and you'll see that's why I say a refresh because it's got a naughty habit naughty wapner of not refreshing it properly there we are we're okay there now um, and similarly if I go into database connections DB we can see that our um, production server connection is uh, as it should be and again if we go back to our production so sorry our development make sure we close that it's really important we're going to do a refresh we're going to open it up and there we are we're back to our SQLite so we can see there from our uh, connection settings that they are target specific and will change automatically depending on the target that you uh, looked at so I hope that's helped clarify for a few people how data database connections work etc and uh, hope you'll join me in the next video